New Hampshire. The first thing we try to always emphasize is that um, does New Hampshire have home rule? Uh, and there are some states that have home rule, um, but we're not one of them. Uh, all the power that towns and cities have come from the legislature. So generally, and, and Margaret and I spent a lot of our time speaking on the phone um, and answering questions by email. And, and a lot of the time, the first thing we do when someone calls and says, can we do X? Like I, I got a call the other day, uh, there was a sophisticated question of a town near the Vermont border, which I think is where the question came from. Could we have something called an integrated zoning ordinance? Well, I didn't even know what an integrated zoning ordinance was, but I found out what it was because it's a unique kind of development zoning regulation, which only is in existence in Vermont. So what, what I have to do, I have to do the research in order to provide the answers. So that's what we spent a lot of our time. That's the first thing we do when I get a question like that. Well, is there a statute that says a town can do that? And I don't know, quickly, no, there isn't. There's one in Vermont, but there's not one in New Hampshire. So and that's real, a lot of, that's the first thing a lot of times we'll do. Is that a, a statutory power that can be inferred or a statutory power can be inferred from another statute that a, a town or city can do something? Um, and it's not enough to say that a law d doesn't say, there's no law that says we can't do it. You really have to find something that says, yes, this is a, an authority a town or a city has, or it can be inferred as inherent to a particular statutory authority. Um, now, one of the, the, the key elements of the budget process is RSA Chapter 32. Everything pretty much that is significant to how the budget committee does its job, because you have an official budget committee, your town meeting voted to have an official budget committee that incorporates certain elements of the statute. Um, but it also applies to all towns. So there are standard procedures that are set forth in RSA Chapter 32 that apply to all towns. Uh, then those in particular uh, are a set of rules that apply to towns with an official budget committee. And of course, you all know that the, the key authority that the budget committee has, it's central. And I just would share, again, I was on a budget committee for two years in my town. So I have a little bit of understanding what you go through, but real veterans of a budget committee know that two years is, is hardly anything. In any case, um, the real key authority of the budget committee is you have a break on the ability of the town meeting to raise money. And they can't raise more than 10% above the amount recommended by the budget committee, uh, taking out certain things that are fi called fixed costs. And that's really key to the authority of the budget committee. Um, and I guess uh, the other thing that's key in a town perhaps not so much like Hampton, but in other towns that have charters. There may be a charter provision. Now, a charter is a form of home rule that is authorized by the legislature. So you have city charters and you have town charters. Uh, for instance, uh, Newmarket has a town charter. Portsmouth has a city charter. So if you had a, a charter, you also might turn to the charter provisions, help you understand how you go about your business of being a budget committee. Um, so, as I've said, um, the purpose of the budget law, in part, um, is to make sure there's a uniform method by which uh, the appropriation and spending by pu of public funds is carried out. And it, and it applies to all municipal corporations, school districts, village districts, everyone, even if they don't have a budget committee, they're subject to uh, the first, I believe it's seven or eight uh, sections of the budget law. I can't Without a budget committee? Yeah. They're the first 13? First 13 uh, sections of the budget statute, RSA Chapter 30, to apply to all towns. Um, one of the things that's in the preamble that uh, it gives us other insight of what the legislature meant, this is in RSA Chapter 32, it says the budget committee in those municipalities that have established one, like Hampton, is intended to have budgetary authority analogous to that of a legislative appropriation committee. So sometimes if you're trying to figure out, well, what's our role in terms of the relationship to the adoption of the budget process in the town meeting, that gives us some insight. That's what the legislator, legislature intended. Um, a couple of other things that are important to the general principles. The, the, the budget law also has other breaks on the action of public officials. Violators, those who spend money without an appropriation or overexpend the bottom line, mm -hmm. those people under RSA Chapter 32 can be removed from office. In fact, there's a very well known case, Blake versus the town of Pittsfield, which I'll mention. Although it doesn't directly touch on the budget law, it highlights the impact of violating the appropriation requirements of any particular department. And in that department, and this happened in the 1980s, 
the Pittsfield police chief uh, was told repeatedly that he was overexpending his overtime line item uh, and was eventually going to overexpend his budget as a whole. And the select board told him once, twice, three times, don't overstand your budget. And eventually he overspent it again. He had a different opinion about the necessities of public safety. Um, and he was removed from office. Now that was a removal of a police chief, and it wasn't necessarily done under the budget law, but it gives us insight. You know, if you don't follow the guidelines, and, and we'll talk about guidelines in terms of appropriation and bottom line budgeting, um, you can be removed from office. Uh, now, removal isn't automatic, although one of the interesting things about the budget law, which you may all know, um, and uh, this is in RSA chapter 3216, if a budget committee member misses four meetings, yeah. consecutive meetings, they're out. Uh, I mean, it's automatic, and I think I don't think there's any other statute in the laws that I'm familiar with for public officials where you have an automatic removal. Yeah. But I think that's, that's what it says. Steve. What's that? For consecutive unexcused. I don't, I'm not sure if the word unexcused is in there, but uh, yeah. it's 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 for uh, uh, absences. Right. Um, the other uh, uh, limitation or break on the actions of a municipal organization that occurs, it's not just an official can be removed, but also the DRA, the Department of Revenue Administration, and they are also kind of looking over your shoulder the whole time in this process. They can disallow appropriations that do not conform to their interpretation of the budget law. And I say that advisedly because sometimes they're not necessarily correct in their interpretation of the budget law, but they can disallow appropriations. Um, again, co continuing on with general principles, there's really two basic divisions of authority in a town. You got the legislative body, which is the town meeting, and you got the governing body. So the bu governing body can be the select board, the village district commissioners, or the school board. Obviously, the legislative body is always the town meeting, school district meeting, or the village uh, district meeting. Two different distinct organizations. And clearly, uh, I, I think it's fair to understand that it's the legislative body that adopts the budget in the final instance, and uh, that's done by the SB2 ballot here in Hampton. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's the uh, select board who implements the budget, carries it out during the rest of the year. Um, so budget committees are not required. It is not something that the statute mandates. That is a, a selection, a choice that a town makes. Obviously, Hampton has made a choice to have the town a, 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 an official budget committee. Um, you could also have, many towns do have this, an advisory budget committee, where uh, it's merely advisory what the budget committee uh, suggests <laughs> to the, uh, the town meeting as a whole. I, and one of the things that the Supreme Court has said in a number of its opinions, the role of the budget committee is to do that kind of detailed examination of the spending and proposed spending of the town to make a rational judgment of what what kind of spending a town can actually afford from the point of view of the citizens so that you know the ordinary voter doesn't have to spend the time with those big thick budget books and i've seen them before i've carried them around to town the budget meetings myself you know with line by line of all those information you, you rely on the budget committee to do that digging and to get that information so that those recommendations come to the town meeting in terms of uh, what is eventually proposed for adoption by the town meeting. So it's a lot of meetings um, at different stages of the process. I can only tell you my experience, uh, and every town is a little bit different. You know, you've got budget committee governing body meetings, and they can be an unlimited number, um, and they're only subject to the public meeting rules, which we've discussed under 91A. Um, I, I would just uh, then you have budget hearings, and now in in a, in a SB2 town, I believe if I'm correct, it's the last the budget hearing has to occur before the second tuesday of january but don't hold me to that i'd have to go look at our calendar one of the things that we do actually do as a resource and i'll remind you of it we do and we spend a lot of time on it and it's one of our favorite jobs isn't it margaret <laughs> we spend about a month putting together these calendars that are on our website yeah. that are designed to give you the exact time frame of how you do things from a to z in a town uh, and we have one for SB2 March, April, and May. We have traditional town meeting uh, March and April, and then we have uh, 
a uh, general, calendar. general calendar. And so they're there. So if you have a question, gee, what's the date we have to hold that budget hearing? You, know, you can go to that calendar, you can look at it. Um, and then you also have, uh, as I said, you have budget hearings you have to have, and then you have the deliberative session, which in a sense is another hearing. Uh, yeah. Because it's the, the opportunity for the voters to come out and discuss debate and potentially amend some of the Warren article within certain rules which are set forth in RSA Chapter 40. Yeah.